Hello everyone. In this video lecture, let us continue understanding module 3, Gate Level Modeling. In this lecture, let us understand how to write the gate level description of a 4 is to 1 multiplexer. To begin with, we all know that multiplexers are digital circuits which have multiple inputs but they have a single output. One out of the multiple inputs is selected and transmitted to the output based on the value of the selection lines. So basically they can connect multiple sources to a single destination. So a simple 4 is to 1 multiplexer. So the first number here tells you we have 4 inputs named as I0, I1, I2 and I3. The second number here tells you that we have only a single output. Let's name that output as Y. A 4 is to 1 MUX will have 2 select lines. Let's name them as S1 and S0. So this is a simple logic diagram of a 4 is to 1 multiplexer. Now let us describe the behavior or the functionality of this multiplexer in terms of a truth table. So we know that though we have I0, I1, I2, I3 inputs, the main inputs here are the select lines. So if the select line is 0, 0, the switch connects the output to I0 line. So we are going to get the output Y equal to I0. If the selection line is 0, 1, Y connects to this point that is I1 value is transferred to Y. So Y is equal to I1. Similarly, if S and S1, S0 are 1, 0, we have Y equal to I2. And if S1, S0 are 1, 1, we have Y equal to I3. Now, we have to write a gate level description of this multiplexer. To write a gate level description, we need a gate diagram. To have a gate diagram, we need an expression. So from this truth table, we are going to build a Boolean expression, an SOP, to get the logic circuit for, from that expression. So the expression is quite simple. To write an SOP, we just have to look into the ones in the output column. But since we have named the outputs here, we have to consider every output. So the first case here would be 0, 0. We know 0, 0 is represented as S1 bar, S0 bar multiplied with the value given there. So what is the value there? I0. I0 can be a 0 or a 1. If it is 0, this term eliminates. If it is 1, this term remains. The next case is 0, 1. So 0, 1 indicates S1 bar S0 multiplied by the input value I1. The next case here is 1, 0. So it is S1 S0 bar multiplied with the input value I2. And the last case is S1, S0, 1, 1. So it is S1 into S0 into I3. So this is the Boolean expression obtained for a 4 is to 1 multiplexer given here. For that Boolean expression that we listed, this is the simplest circuit diagram, the gate level diagram. So we can observe we have three four product terms. So we have four AND gates here. Each of the product terms have three inputs. So all the gates are three input AND gates. The four products are finally ORed. So all the four outputs are taken and given to a OR gate from which we get the final output which is named as OUT. And then with the inputs we can observe. For the first case we have S1, S0 inputs as well. We need their complementary value. So we have S1 line as well as S1 bar line. We have S0 line and its complement as well. So depending on wherever we need a connection. For instance, for the first product term is S1 bar, S0 bar multiplied with I0. So we have I0 taken here. So this represents output of the NOT gate is S1 bar and this is S0 bar. So S0 bar, S1 bar is multiplied with I0 to get the first product term. Similarly, S1 bar and S0, S1 and S0 bar and S1 and S0. So this is the gate level diagram for the given expression. Now first let us identify some set of inputs, outputs and the nets available. So the lines which come out of this dotted box are the main input and output lines. So they are the port signals. That is, we have S1, S0, I3, I2, I1, I0 as the input lines and we have this variable out as the output port. Now internally in the diagram, if we observe, we have some connections between the hardware elements. The connection between hardware elements are nothing but nets 
and nets are declared using the keyword wire. So we have some set of wires namely y0, y1, y2 and y3 and internally if we observe we have another wire here that is the output of the NOT gate going as the input to the AND gate. So we have S1N representing the complement the NOT of S1 and S0N representing the NOT of S0 as wired. So totally we have 4 plus 2 nets or wires also to be declared. So with this understanding let us start writing the gate level description of the multiplexer. This is the reference diagram for us. So let's begin. So every module begins with the keyword module followed by the module name followed by the list of ports in the bracket. So module so the module name given here is MUX4 underscore 1 which is a valid identifier followed by the list of input and output variables. So I have listed output first and then I0, I1, I2, I3, S1, S0 ending with a semicolon. Now from this list we have to declare the input and the output ports. So inputs are declared using the keyword input. So I0, I1, I2, I3, S1, S0 represent the input signals. And the only output here for a multiplexer is the signal out. So we have declared output out. All are one bit signals. There is no vector declarations. Along with the input and output we need some set of wires or the nets. So we know that nets or wires are declared using the keyword wire. And we list out all the wires. So we have S1N, S0N, Y0, Y1, Y2 and Y3. Now once we have done with the declarations, it's time now to do the gate instantiations individually. To write a gate level description, we just have to instantiate a gate. Just write list the output and the input variables. For example, let's instantiate the first NOT gate N1. So this is the first NOT gate here. So under instantiations of gates we had seen, we have to write the output variable first. It's always output comma input because the primitives are already predefined and they have their output variables listed first. So what is the output variable here? It is S1N. So not, we have given an instance name N1, output is S1N, comma, what is the input here? In this line it is S1. So we have just listed S1. So we can observe when we are writing this code we are not worrying about the logic or the behavior of the circuit. We are just doing a straightforward translation, a one to one translation of the circuit into a description. So the second NOT gate is NOT, we have given the name as N2, the output name here is S0N, the input to this is S0. So we have listed output comma input. Next, let's check out the instantiation of the first AND gate. So it is AND, the name of the gate is AND, given a label that is A1. What is the output of this gate mentioned here? It is Y0. So it is Y0, comma. What are the inputs? I0. What is this line? This is S1N. What is this line? This is S0N. So we have Y0, comma, I0, comma, S1N, comma, S0N. Similarly, let's see the second AND gate. For the second AND gate, we have the output as Y1, inputs as I1. The second input is S1N, and the third input is S0. So we just have to trace the lines and just see which is the input and the output variables and list them in the correct order. The third AND gate here has the output as Y2. Inputs are I2, then S1 and then S0N. The fourth AND gate has its output as Y3. Inputs are I3, then S1 and S0. The last OR gate here has its output as OUT and the inputs to this is Y0, Y1, Y2, Y3 which we have previously calculated. So all the gates totally we have 4 plus 3, 7 gates, all the 7 gates have been instantiated and we have just listed the output and the input variables. The gate level description of a multiplexer is done. So we have to end the module using the keyword end module. So the gate level description is just a simple translation of the gates into a Verilog code where we list the output variables first and then the input. At gate level multiplexer, now let us write a stimulus for the same. So stimulus is nothing but a test bench program where we apply the inputs to test the output. 
so normally stimulus will not have any port list so it's the top level module so we let's name that as stimulus this name can be anything we can write it as test bench a multiplexer or any valid identifier so let's call the stimulus block as module stimulus no port list end it with a semicolon now all the variables input variables listed in the main block that is the design block must be declared as a register and all the output variables listed in the design block should be declared as a wire so if we observe i0 i1 i2 i3 s1 s0 were declared as input variable we know the rules for writing a stimulus block we have declared that as a register similarly all the output variables in the design block will be represented by the keyword wire we have just changed the case of the input and output variables where we had used small case here we have using the upper case just to differentiate the design block and stimulus block variables the next step in writing a stimulus block is we have to instantiate the design block so the name of the design block we had given earlier was mux4 underscore one so i'm calling that or invoking that by writing its name this label m1 or whatever name you write here is very important this is the instance name which is compulsory for module instantiations now we are calling a module so that is very important you have a instance name and in the previous module we had declared output variable first so we have to pass the variables in the same order so this is passing by order method we have another method pass by name so in that the order is not important so here the order is very important the previous module we saw out was first then we had i0 i1 i2 i3 and then s1 s0 we are passing the variables in the same order to map them correctly once this is done now we can start initializing values so we use the keyword initial since it's multiple statements we need a block so we are randomly giving some values for i0 i1 i2 and i3 in this case we have giving logic 1 to i0 logic 0 to i1 logic 1 to i2 and logic 0 to i3 this is user dependent to test we have assumed these values now it's time to give different set of selection lines depending on which input has to be displayed so if we are interested to display this these set of lines the values of inputs we know we have to use the dollar display system task but we cannot use dollar display immediately after this we have to give a small delay if we do not give a delay it will take the previous value or it will display an unknown value there must be a small delay from the time of initializing these values and the dollar display so we have given a small dollar hash one indicating after one time unit display the values in binary so i0 is equal to percentage b i1 is equal to percentage b i2 i3 values are displayed and in accordance we have listed out i0 i1 i2 i3 these are the variables in the stimulus block so they have to be in uppercase inside the quotes they can be anything then now let's start giving the selection line values so if s1 and s0 we are first checking the first row in the truth table we are initializing s1 and s0 both to 0 and 0 and then we are displaying the values of s1 and s0 to check the value just to see the waveforms s1 and s0 after one time unit delay we are displaying these set of values then we are changing s1 and s0 to 0 1 and then we are displaying that value and then we are changing s1 to 1 and 0 and then displaying those set of values and finally we are making s1 and s0 as 1 1 and finally displaying those set of values so what we should observe over here is normally when we are giving some set of values we normally give a delay between those statements for example s1 equal to 0 s0 equal to 0 after some time units we have to change this value so that it's neatly displayed in the waveform but if we are not giving these delays here it is at least important that we maintain those delays here that hash one so that the values are displayed correctly now to display every time if you observe we have used the system task five times so instead of using dollar display we can just write dollar monitor only once so that whenever these signal values are changing in the list it automatically displays them so that is an alternate method of writing the same code and every module this begin has a corresponding end and the module ends with the keyword end module so we have understood how to write 
the gate level description of a 4 is to 1 multiplexer and its corresponding stimulus code in this lecture. Thank you.